as I was sharing with some people who were here earlier, that there are two aspects of communication skills which we have not so far explicitly considered. One of them is the ability to speak extempore. Extempore means that the topic on which you have to speak is not pre-announced and therefore you have no time to methodically prepare for that topic. Such occasion will arise at multiple places. Ordinarily, there are extempore speech competitions where participants are given a topic just one minute before they have to speak. So they get exactly one minute to prepare or organize their minds. The second occasion is when you have any group of people discussing amongst themselves on general topics after dinner or whatever in the hostel, for example, and some topic crops up on which you have never applied your mind. And then suddenly the group looks at you and expects you to say something. So you have to say something. So when we say that there is no explicit preparation, that is not entirely true because your entire background of your life, whatever you have learned, studied, etc., is actually available to you, not in the context of this particular topic, but generically. And in a short while you have to relate that topic on which you are supposed to give your opinion and all the learning that you have. And the worst case of the minimum time that you will get for such extempore observations to be made would be during an interview. And somebody asks you a question and uh, you have to respond to that. Although that particular question, including a technical question, might not have been studied by you earlier. So different people will take different approaches. Somebody will try to speak generally. Somebody will try to appear as if he or she knows everything well. Somebody will meekly say, sorry, I don't know anything. That is what you can do in an interview. But in a general discussion session or in a competition, you have no such luxury. You have to say something. I'll give you a, a, two examples of this extempore speaking during interviews. Uh, one, a rather sad example, another, which would have been sad but turned out to be very good. This happened with uh, my friend Professor Avinash Aute when he was appearing for an uh, MTech interview after his BTech. A colleague of ours who had gone to England for three years had just returned, Professor R.D. Kumar, who was uh, the head of that particular selection panel for MTech interviews. Of course, the students of BTech did not know him because he was not there in the computer center. And uh, I think Avinash Aute was asked about magnetic tape controllers. I don't know how many of you have heard of magnetic tape controllers. Have you heard of magnetic tapes, data tapes? So any device requires a controller, like you have a disk controller, you have a terminal controller, whatever. whatever. So it's magnetic tape. We had an EC1030, a giant mainframe, which had four magnetic tape drives as the main storage facility. There was a desk, uh, two disk drives, in fact, uh, removable desk. The, the disc pack used to weigh very heavily, you have to take it out, cylinders like this, and you have to take it out and replace it by some other. That entire pack, do you know what was the capacity? It cost us 50,000 rupees, that pack. And the disc drive itself was about 4 lakh rupees. It was the cost of that disc drive and the pack, removable pack was uh, 50,000 The capacity was 7.25 megabytes. Can you read that? 7.25 megabytes. Obviously, you could not store any data on that. So you stored the operating system, the compilers, and some sort space on the disk which you required for external sort. Most of the data resided on magnetic tape. So this was the background of that mainframe. And in the interview for admission, uh, Avinash was asked this question that, uh, tell us about magnetic tape controllers. Avinash knew absolutely nothing about magnetic tape controllers. But he figured that the gentleman who is asking a question is also unlikely to know about magnetic tape controllers because he does not appear to be a faculty of the CS department of IIT Bombay. <laughs> and he used his intelligence to predict what should be magnetic tape controller and started talking about it. And Kumar calmly listened to him for three minutes. And then at the end of three minutes, he says, my dear young friend, 
you know absolutely nothing about magnetic tape controllers. Go back, prepare again and come next year. <laughs> For the whole year, Avinash Aute played chess tournaments in the city and came back next year. Of course, unfortunately, he prepared very well for the magnetic tape controllers, but he was not asked on magnetic tape controllers, he was asked on something. This is one example of what could happen if you take a call and you miss the call. Because here, you don't get even one minute to think. You may ask for 20 seconds, 30 seconds in an interview also, but typically you are expected to react quickly. The second example is of another friend of mine, Bacha, Mr. Achyut Gorbole, who is a chemical engineer, like in those days, uh, as now, there used to be hardcore leftists and hardcore rightists in the campus. He was a hardcore leftist. Both camps usually routinely sent two or three graduates of IIT to work in the tribal areas for the benefit of them. In fact, I had a very curious question to ask all of them, saying that you also want to do this, you also want to do this, so why don't you work together? And uh, everybody will vociferously say, no, 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 tribes must become better, but as we say. Exactly the same thing the other group will say. They must become better as we say. Then I realized that their motto was completely different. Aapka uddhar hona chahiye. Lekin mein jaisa kehta hoon, waisa hona chahiye. Ye kehti hai, waisa nahi hona chahiye. So that is the ordinarily a, 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 a problem in life. Anyway, so like many committed people, he had spent three years as a chemical engineer three years working with the tribals and after three years, after completing his commitment, he came back and he wanted a job. So he applied and there was a IBM job. In those days, there was no computer science by the way. So chemical, electrical, mechanical, metallurgy, uh, physics, chemistry, maths, anybody could apply, would be selected. So he prepared of course for computer programming which was prescribed, etc., etc. And he was interviewed. He passed the technical interviews. That's one good thing about IITians. They do everything very confidently. In the interview, he was asked a question on the social unrest in South America and the response of the people. The economic response. Economic and social unrest in South America and the response of the people. So this was the question which was asked in his final interview. Remember, he has clear technical interviews and so on, but he is supposed to answer on this. What would you have said ordinarily? You would have said, sir, I never went to South America in my life, or I don't know much about it. It so happened that because he was a hardcore leftist, he had actually studied Che Guevara's life and everything that was happening in South America. So he ended up giving a 20-minute discourse on the entire South American situation through that fellow. That fellow was zapped and uh, he said, uh, uh, you are selected. Now he pointed out, but sir, I do not know my score in the technical, uh, uh, this is. He says, it doesn't matter, you are selected. That is how he joined IBM and became an IT expert. Point that I am trying to make is that there will be occasions when you will be required to respond in an extempore fashion and you will have to respond. So today we will try that trick with some of you where I will write a topic. Sometimes the topic may make generic sense. Sometimes the topic may not make any sense. But you are supposed to react to it. I will call people randomly. They will have to come here and speak for two minutes on the topic. Okay. Uh, how do you like the random selection to be done, any algorithm you would suggest? So we have about 20 minutes to do that and we can we can do that with about uh, maybe five people. Okay, We don't know which five, could be you, could be you, could be you, whatever. Yeah, this, this is a good randomization idea. Uh, people with roll numbers ending in 0 and 1. Please raise your hands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I forgot. Your groups are like that. Eh? Okay, so all of you will be here. So 0 and 1. That is good. So let me write down the topic. Start thinking about it. You will get exactly one minute. After which I will select one of you in random. And you will have to come here and speak on that topic. Okay.
Now, since such topics have to be generally related to life, but should not necessarily belong to the area of expertise. Now, our area of expertise is computer science, but we are all social animals. We live in this society. We entertain ourselves. We see cricket, whatever, whatever. So many things we do. So the rest of the class would now suggest topics out of which I will select one. Come on. That side. Sorry? Are you talking about this same Syria? Oh. So condition in Syria. Generally Syria. Okay. Any other topic? Come on. Impact of? Impact of deep learning on future. Deep learning. It is going to affect everyone. Uh, sorry for exhibiting ignorance, but is deep learning a standard term somewhere? Meaning it is standard with you and one of your friends. <laughs> Computer science. My God, I am really ancient. No, no, no. That is not permitted. You cannot choose an area from the area of expertise. All right. So let me say impact of artificial intelligence. Fine. Okay. One more topic from that side. Intolerance. Oh my God. Any topic? Not the zero one students. <laughs> Football in India. Oh. Do you belong to Mohan Bagan or East Bengal or something? No. <laughs> oh, you are a football fan. Okay. All right. So we have these four topics. As we were writing them, our friends from roll number zero and one would have already started thinking about these. Not yet. So let us give them their 40 seconds. No, that is not fair. I should define a topic and then I should give them uh, 40 seconds. So let us choose a non-controversial topic, football. Now this is your topic. You get 30 seconds to organize your thoughts. And then you have to walk here in 10 seconds and speak. Okay. All set? You come over. Speak on football. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the topic uh, given is football. I will be talking about three points. If you have to develop football in our country, the first thing which needs to start is at the you have to develop it from the grassroots level. So the basic amenities the infrastructure, the grounds needs to come up and it has to be well supported by competitions at various levels at schools and colleges. Like cricket, we have under 19, under 15. So that kind of competitions would be required. Second, we need to have a proper coaching staff and the facilities which will help a people to learn and come up. The third and the last thing is that you should have competitions like uh, IPLs and other leagues. We can have football leagues, which is already there. So this will help uh, more and more people to uh, come up and participate and uh, maybe take India ahead in the football field. Thank you. I would consider this to be a very ex good extempore effective speech. It would speak coherently. We identified three important points to mention. We mentioned it. So whether he is speaking in an interview or he is speaking extent or anywhere else, this could be considered as a good effective. All right. So let's now go to roll numbers two and three. So any topics for roll numbers two and three? Now you can be vociferous in suggesting topics. Yes. Come on. 
you can't even think of topics in an extempore fashion. <laughs> Sorry? Higher education. Okay, one more. Okay, please don't add better secondary education, better medical education, better education. We are very good at subdividing a class, once class is identified. But think of different, all right. People other than roll number two and three. Any topic? Rika virus. Sorry? Rika virus. Rika virus. No, but this is a technical topic. Some people may know very well about it. That's very unfair. Any other topic? Come on. You have to be able to think of generic topics in an extent for fashion at least. Global warming, okay. Any other topic from that side? Think. There are one, two, three, four ladies there. They have been silent so far, so speak. I would like one of the ladies to mention a point. Come on. Or 2016. All right. There are enough of these uh, topics now. I can notice that some topics are very specific. Some topics are intrinsically connected with our life, such as higher education and so on. So let me choose a generic topic on which the general awareness probably exists everywhere. We want to see how our individual students are aware of that. So I'm choosing global warming as a topic. Okay. Roll number two and three get 30 seconds. So organize your thoughts on global warming. And since this event is being recorded, I would suggest that anybody who is pointed out to come and speak should start by giving his or her roll number and name and then speak so that it remains on record. So what is your roll number and name? 1530540001. So Shan Tower. So that's the name that will record it. Okay, fine. So you had more than 30 seconds. All right. All the people with roll number two and three, please raise your hands once again and high enough so that I can see those hands. One. Ah, you come here and speak. Good morning, everybody. I'm Anjali KJ. My roll number is 1530533. I'm here to talk about global warming. This is one of the most talked about topics and most everywhere you would have heard about this being discussed and when we talk about global warming main things to talk about is the causes and the effects. Causes are mainly because of the human activities going on now like deforestation, pollution, all these factories, all the num increase in the number of vehicles and so on. So all this have uh, led to really uh, bad effects on the climate and that is uh, leading to this increase in the temperature, global temperatures. And the main effects would be that, like the melting of the ice caps. And even now we can really feel that in some parts of India now, like I'm from Kerala and in Kerala now the temperatures are going to about 38, 39 degrees, which has never happened before. I think this is the first time and that is one of the greatest effects of this global warming in the current day. Thank you. Having a critique on such talks. But it might be useful for the entire class to contemplate on what is being spoken and write down just two or three points which could be in the form of either a counter-argument or 
mention of a point which you think should have been included in that extempore talk but was not included. The purpose is not to critically analyze what is spoken, but the purpose is to force our own mind to apply to that particular topic once again, individually. Okay, so that this will also ensure our alertness to listen to what is being spoken and our own thinking which will add or subtract from that. Is that okay? So I'll give you one minute, you have to write in your own notebook or wherever, it's not a submission thing, on both the topics that were mentioned, uh, that were talked about, uh, the points that were made, you know, so you don't write anything about that. But you should say what additionally could have been stated or what perhaps was stated but was not absolutely correct. So any, any one of these. So you should just write this down. Meanwhile, let us go ahead with the identification of topics for all numbers uh, 4 and 5, right? Okay, who are the roll number 4 and 5? Ah, big group here. So accept them, please suggest topics for them. Rahul. <laughs> After the JNU incidents, I think everybody is politically charged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Development of smart cities. So, should I just say smart cities? Any topic? Odd even? What? Depression. Depression? In IIT Bombay, there are people who are depressed. <laughs> there are people, <laughs> aren't they? I have been very curious to find out how people get depressed. I have been attempting to be depressed, but last 45 years of my stay on the campus, I have not managed to do that. So I am very curious to know, but anyway. I know at least two people in my batch who have been diagnosed with depression. Are they cleverly faking depression to avoid attending classes and courses or they are actually depressed? Well, that depends on the psychiatrist who treated them in IIT Bombay Hospital. So. Oh, yes. Lack of mental strength is indeed a problem with the humanity for all 4000 years. It comes up sometimes in a stronger form in certain segments and uh, curiously it seems to affect more the more educated people than the less educated people. So I do not know whether uh, education is strongly related to depression, I would not hazard to say that. But I think the mental strength, uh, perhaps, but then let me not speak about it, not depressed, but what we want to say is depression cases, right? I will just say depression. If I single out IIT Bombay, it exists in it. Okay. Any topic from that side? You guys are not coming up with topics, that whole bunch on that side. Come on. Okay, you say something. Uh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. I thought all of us were from Earth. <laughs> How many of you have seen the Mars and Venus uh, shining on the skyline? Anybody who is an observer? You have seen them? So Mars is reddish in color and Venus shines more brightly. And particularly when Venus is close to Moon, it's an amazing sight. How many of you have enjoyed that sight? Ah, quite a few, not bad. Anyway, so we digress. Let's come back to this. The interesting topics, 
but again i will select something which is at least remotely connected with computer science but not directly because there are a number of other issues involved the topic is smart cities so you get your 30 seconds start thinking about smart cities as i said you will be randomly selected and you'll have to speak on smart cities in 30 seconds all right 30 seconds are over so we we'll select a representative from the group of students with roll number sending in 4 and 5 all right you come and speak hello everyone my name is sanjin chaudhuri uh, my roll number is 15305084 so uh, what do you mean by smart city smart city has uh, well communication well transportation uh, people can know uh, in very first manner what is happening in the city so uh, and the communication with other uh, uh, people uh, and uh, they know each and everything about the city so uh, for this smart city he can uh, consume much more thing than the other uh, cities he can uh, uh, and the uh, there are other cons in the smart city uh, some uh, the example is uh, like if uh, people are not aware many are uh, burglars are there they can stole the gadgets in smart city uh, that's it thank you so as i said all of you should start writing down about the things that in your opinion should have been included in this presentation and if there is anything which you think is incorrect by the way all the points that you individually write you will have to submit them as an assignment end of some time so whatever brief some one or two sentences will suffice on each topic that you select all right so we now go to roll number 6 and 7 whether people is roll number 6 and 7 One, two, three, four, five only. My God! Ajay, the attendance is ten. All right, our friends, please help them to select one of the topics. So start from here. Topics. World Cup. World Cup. World Cup T20. Fine. Okay. sleeping in classroom but traditionally that has been a favorite exercise of some of the people always so is there any special discussion that you think is warranted warranted okay okay female education in india you were selling bollywood versus hollywood terrorism oh, wow very interesting topics all of them are relevant by the way do you notice that this exercise of collecting topics randomly from people has helped us to identify the general thought process of the whole class i'll be putting these list of topics up just as an example of how a collective exercise done randomly can still come up with very meaningful things for all of us to discuss so my compliments 
Anyway, here we have to take uh, some topic. Let us take some light topic at this juncture. Sleeping in classroom. Okay. So you get your 30 seconds. Uh, since most of you don't seem to be of the category of sleeping in classrooms, don't use these 30 seconds to practice some sleeping and then come. You might want to do something else. All right. So your 30 seconds. You are doing a Google search on sleeping in classroom, is it? <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so I think more than 30 seconds. So, all right. Will you please raise your hands once again? This is roll number six and seven. All right. All right. The corner most blue uh, shirt. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am uh, Shri Jai. Roll number uh, 15305007. So I am going to speak about the sleeping in the classroom. Uh, as you know, it's a bad habit, actually. <laughs> First of all. The question is, why students sleep? There, are, there can be only two reasons. Either he, he hasn't sleep uh, that night. And the second <laughs> reason is, uh, he's uh, facing that subject very... Uh, Bore means a subject like a history and Vedic culture and that. <laughs> so, uh, first uh, remedial solution for that is to practice uh, early sleep before at 12 o'clock. Uh, I think no, nobody follows in the hostel that that should be followed. I think you have slept at least two times. <laughs> and uh, and you should take an interest in the subject too. If uh, you are finding the subject boring, that means you are not enjoying a subject here in IITB. And I think in IITB every subject is important and every subject is inter interesting, I think. So, practice. Thank Great. you. Very interesting observations. I was curiously listening. She says in IIT every subject is important. And then he added, also interesting. <laughs> So it's not necessary that everything that is important should be interesting. And everything that is interesting should be important. But I digress. All right. Before I make my concluding remarks, let me uh, collect topics for all numbers ending in 8 and 9. Who are the people? Will you please raise your hands? Oh. They are larger in strength than you. Why? You two are not eight and nine, is it? Oh, you are. You are raising hand like this, which I can't see. <laughs> raising hand is like this. <laughs> All right. Now, this is your last chance to exercise your khunnas against that group. So, mention topics. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, interesting topic. I'll just say gay people. Okay. Okay. ISIS. ISIS. You are the one who suggested Syria also, is it? No. <laughs> Syria also suggested somebody else. <laughs> so it is interesting to have a lot of interest in Middle East. They are far nearer to us than Europe and America. So that... Sorry? Joint family. Gravitational waves. Oh. So, gravitational waves as in physics or gravitational waves as in science fiction or both? I see. Oh. Any topic from that side? Oh. 
All right. Enough topics. So let me choose randomly. While I find all topics interesting and useful, I'll select startup bubble in India. All right. So our friends from the last group get 30 seconds. Uh, am I too harsh in selecting this topic? Uh, are you all familiar with what a startup company is? My God, they are not business like people at all. Okay, all the more reason you should think about it and speak for two minutes. Good enough. We'll stick with the topic because the topic is not in our hands anyway. All right. Uh, will you please raise your hands once again and full hands raise, please? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, the last person, the last bench. Hello, friends. My name is Neha, and my topic is startup bubble in India. So, for startup, we have few things like what is your idea? This is the most important thing. And second thing is uh, what is your target audience? Like which class of audience you want to target? And third thing is uh, how your idea is helping people in their day to day activity. So these are the three things for a successful uh, 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 startup idea. So, uh, like uh, we have many series coming, and um, we have uh, they have uh, they have creating their own startups, and they are showing how they are they are moving from basic uh, basic level to uh, to the successful level. And uh, we have many uh, successful entrepreneurs like Rahul Yadav who have recently come to visit IIT Bombay and give give us a speech about about his new ventures as well, so that's it. She is very clever. She spoke on startups, not on the startup bubble in India. That's very interesting. I'll make just two concluding remarks. Coming out of this, there is a case of a MTech exam. Uh, Sarda was teaching data processing course and he had a question describing a certain logic for calculating the employee's pay. And the question said, write a COBOL program to do something, something, something. People attempted to write, but one person came up with a COBOL program, which was apparently not doing anything about salary computation. It was a COBOL program. It was correctly computing something completely different. And Sada was puzzled, so he called him. And uh, he nonchalantly said, sir, you said write a COBOL program. I have written a COBOL program. Of course, it solved some other problem because I could not understand that problem. So, our lady has not understood the bubble part, but she knew about startups, so she spoke confidently about it. Uh, we are already late, but I'll tell you one kind of ad hoc preparation that sometimes people do. So, this is a story which I had heard, I do not know whether it's true or not, in uh, a school, my 14th school in Madhya Pradesh called Dayanandare Vidyal in Gwalior. When we were studying Hindi, in our terminal exam, there used to be topics on which you have to write essays. And people would prepare on topics. But I'm told that a senior of mine uh, was perplexed by perpetually finding out topics which people had prepared but were not asked for. So he prepared an essay very thoroughly on an odd topic called the Crow of India. Have you heard of this? Hindustan ka kawa. So he prepared a full essay on it. And then among the topics which came up, like these topics, the topics had nothing to do with any kawa or any whatever. So he chose a cricket match that I watched. That was the topic on which he wrote the essay. So he wrote saying that a cricket match was announced. I went to the stadium. There was a huge crowd. I could not get any ticket. Then there were some trees around on which people were climbing. So I also climbed up on one tree and I was waiting for the match to start when I saw the crow. <laughs> Then he wrote his entire prepared uh, this thing. And then in the last paragraph, he said how some 11 people came, played, and the match ended, etc. So it is also possible to try and cleverly do such things. Of course, if the teachers actually read such assignment, apparently I am told that he got good marks in that essay, for whatever reason. So there are people who give marks based on the length of the essay rather than what is written. Anyway, that doesn't apply to most of our professional lives. So we have to be very pertinent in whatever we say. Thank you very much. I hope this exercise was useful. Uh, 
next week there won't be any uh, class uh, the next uh, uh, tuesday there is a session but thursday is a holiday and i want you to prepare your literature survey absolutely absolutely in a top class fashion so use that extra hour if you want to perfect your literature survey well you have already made the first submission which is due on monday as the notification says and these deadlines are hard and i am now positively tagging you are passing the course on proper submissions on the three assignments the first one has been announced an upload link is there the second one already shared with you the third one is the second one itself in the latex so that's a latex assignment more than anything else but you can use that opportunity to further modify your literature survey if you so wish in the third week all the dates have been indicated the hard deadline so next week no class but deadlines to be observed for submissions thank you